Hello everybody, my name is Walter, and this is episode 59 of my and Command series. In this episode, I would like to give you a few examples of how you can use Minecraft commands to implement raycasting in Minecraft. But first, let's talk about what raycasting actually is. It's a pretty simple technique where you start at a point in three-dimensional space, and then you move in a given direction, step by step, until you hit, for example, a surface, or have traveled a certain amount of steps or a certain distance. It is quite commonly used in things like computer graphics to calculate which areas are lit up and which are in a shadow, or uh, if you shoot a bullet, would it hit a wall or maybe an enemy. In Minecraft, it can be quite useful to detect if the player is currently looking at a certain block or a certain entity, and then to do something if that is the case. Sometimes raycasting is also referred to as ray tracing, and I have actually done so in the past, but ray tracing, after a little bit of research, I found out is something related, but still different. Ray tracing is basically a method where you use vector maps to directly calculate the intersection point between a straight line and a flat surface. So instead of the iterative approach where you slowly go forward until you hit the surface, here you do this all in one step using simple math. Or, well, not so simple math. And with that covered, it's time for the examples. So I have three different examples which all do the same. They raycast until I hit the first block or I'm further away than five meters. And if I hit a block, then it projects a particle as you can see here. So everywhere I'm looking, I'm creating such a particle. And they all work the same. So there is no real difference in what happens on the outside, but they are quite a bit different on what happens on the code level. So with that said, let's have a look at the code itself. First, let's have a quick look at the function that is triggered when the recasting is successful and we fit that block. So as you can see, recasting found only contains a single command, which is placing the cloud particle at the current position. Obviously you could do basically anything else, replace the block, set it a flame, damage the nearest entity or whatever. And with that, let's talk about the first of the three examples I showed you earlier. This, as the name of the function implies, is a hard-coded recasting which is likely the simplest approach, but it's also the most annoying if you want to change something like the step size. So let's have a look at what is going on. First of all, how is this function triggered? Well, I have my command block I triggered earlier, and inside of this command block, I have this command. So it executes as the nearest player at the position of that nearest player, and then it just triggers the function, this function here. Then, as you can see, it's basically just the same command over and over with just a minute adjustment of this numerical value here. And what this does, for one, it goes back to the player position, which I already did before, so this is somewhat superfluous, but just to be on the safe side, I added it here. Then, since that is at the feet level of the player, but I want to see what the player is looking at, not what the feet of the player are looking at, I am going with anchored eyes next. Then, I'm doing the step. And here I'm using the carré notation to do this in the direction the player is looking. So in this case, I go 0.1 meters or blocks in the direction the player is currently looking at. Then, and this is the condition I'm checking for, I say, okay, if this is not air, so if I hit a block, then run return, which stops the run of this function here. So once I have a hit, I'm not continuing with the raycasting, I'm stopping the raycasting, which is the main difference to scanning along the line, for example. And then I'm finally triggering the function I showed you earlier, raycasting found. And the next lines are exactly the same, except I'm going 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so on, until in this case, I end up at 6.0 meters forward. Following that, let's talk about the second example, which is actually my personal favorite, and uses recursive function calls with macros to make this much more wearable and adjustable on the fly. As before, let's have a look at the command in the command block, which is in this one here. And first, I'm changing the executor to the nearest player, then the position to the player position, which is at feet level. That will be important a bit later. Then I'm running the function, And the function itself requires two additional arguments, a max distance, which is in this case set to five, and a step size, which is set to 0.1. And just by changing those two values here, I can change how many steps I'm doing, I can change how far the recasting goes, I don't have to change the code itself. I can do this during the 
actual call of the function. Which is much, much nicer if you want to try things out than via hard coding. With that covered, let's have a look at what is actually going on here. So first I'm executing anchored on the eyes. So I'm changing the level to the eyes and then positioned at the current position. Now, why am I doing this? Well, it has to do with anchored eyes. Anchored eyes doesn't automatically adjust the position. It only adjusts the reference point for the positioned argument. So I actually need those two in combination to actually adjust from the feet level up to the eye level. This is where I actually want to check whether I fit a block or not. Then, as before, I'm checking whether I'm running into an air block or not. If I'm not running into an air block, then I'm stopping the run at this point and calling the previous function raycasting found again. If I haven't found a non-air block, then I continue further down. And here I have split this actually into two lines, so it's a bit easier to read. So this is where the macro comes into play. So I start with the dollar sign and then continue with execute if entity. And this is my stopping condition or my running condition. And here I am checking self distance up to max distance. Now at this point, the executor of this function is still the player. The position may not be at the player anymore, but the executor is still the player. So what I'm doing is if the current position is still within five meters of myself, in the case I'm giving it five meters as the max distance, then I'm positioning forward with the step size. So I'm adjusting the position for the next step. And then I'm running the same function, so this function here recursively, again with the same max distance and the same step size. And that means the next recursion starts 0.1 meters forward. And then the next recursion, another 0.1 meters forward. And that happens until either I find a block or I run into the max distance limitation. And with that, we come to the last example for today, which is using a summoned entity as the vehicle for the raycasting. Now in earlier days, this was the only real way to do this. But nowadays we have execute positioned and I would really recommend using what I showed you in the second example over this here, since using an entity comes with a lot of overhead and may impact performance and introduce additional lag. But there may be some edge cases where it is helpful to have an entity at the current raycasting position. So I'm showing you how you can do this with an entity. And with that covered, let's have a look at the two involved functions here. So the first does some initial setup. Then it triggers the second function, which is the actual raycasting. And then it finally does some cleanup. This function is triggered via this command in the command block which first changes the executor to the nearest player, then the position to that nearest player. Then next up, anchored eyes positioned carré, 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 moves the position up to the eyes of the player. This is where a area effect cloud is summoned in. And this area effect cloud is now the new executor and runs the function recasting with entity in it, which is this one here. Now for the setup, I need to make sure the area effect cloud is looking in the same direction as the player. In this case, I'm doing it via two teleport commands. First, I'm teleporting self, which is the area effect cloud to the nearest player. This is at feet level. But fortunately enough, I already moved the execution position to the eye level. So all I need to do after the effect is teleport tilde tilde tilde, which moves it back into eye level. So first I'm coping position and rotation of the player, and then I'm adjusting the position again. So effectively, I've only copied the rotation. Next up, I set up a scoreboard objective raycast countdown and set it to 50, which determines how many steps the raycasting later on will go at maximum. Then I'm triggering the raycasting. I'll have a look at that in a moment. And then finally, I'm doing a bit of cleanup by getting rid of the scoreboard objective and killing the area effect cloud. Now for an area effect cloud, this is not strictly necessary since it has an inbuilt countdown. But for example, if you were using an armor stand, it would be required. And with that said, let's actually have a look at the recasting. So first of all, it's executed at the position of the entity, 
which is the array effect cloud. And then I'm just calling recasting of entity. I could also introduce, uh, as I did with the second example, macros. But here I went for a simple approach with just simple functions. But you can mix and match as you wish. Now, next up. This is the recasting of entity function, which does the actual recasting. And the first thing I do is execute at the current position of the array effect cloud. Here, this part is extremely important because the position of the array effect cloud will change during the recasting. So I need to make sure that I'm actually centering on the current position of the area effect cloud, as you will see in all of or most of the following commands too. Then, that is where I run the teleport command, and this is pretty simple. I teleport in the direction the area effect cloud is looking, 0.1 meters forward. That is the reason why I had to make sure that the area effect cloud is actually looking in the correct direction. Then, I'm doing the check. So, is at the current position a non-air block? If that is the case, stop the run and just run recasting found once. So same idea as before. Then I'm adjusting the countdown by one down and then I'm potentially using recursion for the next step in the recasting. For that, execute if the score is still positive, then run recasting with entity. And that is already the entire recasting done. And that brings us to the end of this episode about recasting. I hope you enjoyed it. I wish you a nice day. And well, see you.